Okay, today on the Coloss Conjecture, I forget how to divide. We kill a man, and we put a whale on a scale. In all seriousness, however, the Coloss Conjecture is a seriously interesting problem posed by Lothar Kolotz, a German mathematician who had a pension for world domination and a hatred for Superman unparalleled by anyone. Wait, no, that's Lex Luthor. No, what I really meant was this German mathematician, Kolotz, basically at least let us have a nice problem. And not only that, but has had us scratching our heads for ages. It goes like this. Basically, you take any number and you figure out if it's odd or even. If it's odd, you multiply by 3 and add 1, and if it's even, you divide by 2. That's it. You keep on doing that until the sequence ends, and the sequence always ends with 4, 2, 1. If only it was 4, 2, 0, haha, 420 blaze it, but really, it's only 4, 2, 1. And you might end up scratching your head like this guy and hating 4, 2, 1. Okay, so let's give you an example. 3, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. You start at 3, you notice that it's odd, and then you multiply by 3, add 1, you get 10. You notice that it's even, you divide by 2. And you continue to do this. And people are weird, so they make trees of these things. No, not bushes, trees. And just like any other normal person, I t always get my trees, flip them around, and try to find their roots. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a function. We're going to basically reverse it and see if you can actually come up with new numbers starting from 4. So if you have 4, you figure out that, oh, you can go to either 1 or 8. So let's go to 8. If you go to 8... Um, you can go to 16 or 2.3, but 2.3 is not an even or odd number. It's a decimal, so you can't use it. And you keep on going until you find more and more numbers. And the question is, if you can find a number that you cannot create by going this backwards route, then you would prove that the Coloss conjecture is, in fact, incorrect. Uh, 4 does not work there, actually, because 4 is an even number, and we're questioning whether or not it comes from an odd or even number. So 4 cannot be used here. It's not in the sequence. So you use 26, you get 52, 8.33, yeah, all the shabam. After this, we can also think of it as a line of evens or odds in a sequence. So 4 to 1 is just even, even, odd. And you have to prove that this last number is going to be equal to the first number. So if you have n is equal to 4, you have to prove that the equation n divided by 2, n divided by 2, again, and then multiply by 3 plus 1, has to be equal to the original n. And if you can prove this, you can prove the Colas conjecture and find a new sequence. So you can try any uh, random sequence, like 3 evens and odd, but you always end up with 4, 2, 1. And you have to remember, we're trying to find a new ending sequence that's not 4, 2, 1, otherwise known as 4, 20, light. People even graph out their results and try to find patterns, but might as well make some abstract art. And people have, because the fact is, 10 to the 18th of these numbers have been proven to be wrong. Or in other words, the amount of atoms that a whale weighs is going to be a failure. So what did I do? I tried to figure it out. Uh, so I made, you know, I just kind of copy and pasted the numbers and the function that I found on the internet, and we end up with around this number, 18 seconds. It's kind of dumb, kind of bad. Okay, so we try to make a new one by adding a set and using this really cool thing called the sieve of Aristoteles. And the really cool part of the sieve of Aristoteles is that we can start from a range, so 1 to 100, and we can say, okay, so we want to find all those numbers. Let's say that we find that 13 is a number that back, comes back to 4, 2, 1. Then we can basically rule out that 13, 13 times 2, 13 times 2 times 2, 13 times 2 times 2 to the whatever, to, until it's greater than 100 is basically too much. And we don't have to check those numbers anymore because they're now inside the set. And we've checked the set. This is primarily actually used in primes. So... If we have a prime, right, uh, you find 2, you know that everything up uh, multiplied by 2 is going to be a failure. And that's what we do. You see the sea of Aristoteles. But the fact is, all of this, even though it's great and time-saving, it only gets us, three, gets us to 3 times 10 to the 7th. Not enough. Um, 
So we killed Aristophanes in the next thing, and we just checked the set, because the set's all we care about. Um, so what we did was we put the functions in, because I learned that apparently that's bad for timing, and we only checked the odds. And the reason we checked the odds is because, like in 4, 2, 1, 1 being the least in the sequence, any number must be odd to be the least of its sequence. If it was even, then you just divide by 2 and it wouldn't be the least. So that's why we only check odds. But that was not enough. We had to invent something new, something more technical. The sieve of Romero. And the sieve of Romero is very important because what it says is that we checked every single number from 0 to n, and if we find that the sequence ever comes below n, then we know for a fact that it's going to fail because we've already checked every single number below n. And right there, we're able to check out bigger numbers. We started with 29 seconds for uh, 10 to the 6th, and we got all the way down to 59 seconds for 10 to the 8th. That right there is several orders of magnitude better. I hope that you guys will also try to embark on finding the new ending sequence. Thank you. Bye.